Quality or quantity? Which matters more? Growing up, I would often hear teachers preach quality over quantity, and I used to believe them, but here's why I'm having doubts now. A high school teacher once did an experiment with her pottery class. She divided everyone into two groups that would be graded differently. The first group were to be graded on the quality of their best pot, while the second group would be graded based on the number of pots that they created. Which of the two groups do you think the best pots came from? Well, as it turns out, the quantity group created the best work. The first group had been so fixated on creating the perfect pot that they just became handicapped by the unreasonably high expectations of perfection, which led to the fear of failure and crippled their self confidence. On the other hand, the second group of students had the freedom to experiment, make mistakes, iterate, and develop their creativity and skills to ultimately produce not just far superior pots in terms of quantity, but also in quality. So, the point of the story is if you want a good grade in pottery class, you have to earn it. And also, maybe it's better to prioritize quantity over quality. And other experiments similar in nature had the same result. A photography class was broken into two groups. The first group is graded on the quality of just one photo, so they can only submit one piece of work, while the second group was graded purely on the quantity of photos that they submitted. So maybe like 100 photos would be an A, and maybe 80 photos will give you a B. And once again, the results show that the best photos came from the quantity group. The first group spent almost all their time on setting up the scene, doing lighting, preparing, learning different angles, and trying to get the perfect shot. While the second group spent their time experimenting and not stressing out about producing the best work. Being less constrained opens up our minds to more creative ways to think about problems, and the best business leaders in the world understand the importance of quantity over quality. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos once said in an annual shareholder letter that conventional wisdom is usually right, but outsized returns often come from betting against those conventional wisdoms. Given a 10% chance of a 100 times payoff, you should take that bet every time. And you're going to be wrong 9 times out of 10, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't go after it. Because as it applies to investing, it doesn't matter so much if you're right or wrong, or even how many times you're right or wrong. What actually matters is how much you'll win if you're right and how much you're going to lose if you're wrong. It's about taking those asymmetric bets that may not always pay off, but when they do, you can leverage a much larger upside compared to how much you can lose on the downside. For example, just a few days ago, my Shopify put option was trading in the money and was about to expire. Instead of closing my position or rolling it forward, I decided to take assignment of the 100 shares. This is because I think the lowest Shopify could go in the next while is probably around 380, but it could easily go up to $1,000 on the upside, which is the analyst's average price target. So if things go poorly, I may lose $200 per share, but I'm still holding on to a really good company. But if things do go well, then I could make a profit of $420 per share. Given that Shopify is a profitable company and it has a really high growth rate, this is the type of high probability bet that I'm willing to make. But a year ago, I wouldn't have seen this opportunity because I didn't have the experience. Over time, I've learned how Shopify moves in the market. No amount of reading books or learning from other traders could have emotionally prepared me to just spend $58,000 on this one company. This kind of conviction can only come from doing the work, learning from my personal mistakes, and accumulating that experience. This is often easier said than done. It's natural for people to want to wait until they think the conditions are perfect before they take action to improve their lives. Like, oh, I'll just read up on financial markets until I know exactly how I'm going to build a six figure investment portfolio. Or I'm going to watch all the motivational videos on YouTube and business tactics until I know I can create a million dollar company. But often the best way forward is to just get started. I mean, yes, you do have to continue your studying along the way. Learn vicariously from others who do have more experience than you do. But the best way to internalize a lesson is to experience it firsthand. That can be scary. It can often feel like you don't know what you're doing or you're not ready yet to take the next step. But that's what experimentation is for. It's to help you figure out how to move forward using what you know already. And then you can incorporate more of what works in your routine, discard what doesn't work, and improve your process. It's basically through the act of experimentation and learning that you become a better problem solver, a better decision maker, and a better money manager. And remember, if you already know that something is going to work, then it's not a real experiment. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do it if you know it's going to help you, but just don't expect any new insight from it.
And that's what successful people have figured out that allows them to continuously find more and more success. They know that perfection is the enemy of good. They understand that waiting on the sidelines before they have all their ducks in a row is a costly mistake. Because having a bias towards action is almost always beneficial, especially when things are uncertain. Because by the time you figure it out completely and you're certain about something, other people will have too, and then you will have lost your advantage. So, ironically, it's by not having high standards and allowing yourself to make mistakes and not have the goal of making the perfect pot that ultimately leads to abundance of knowledge and mastery of the craft. Now, of course, I don't know what your potential in a particular field may be. Making money is easier for some people than others, but what I am certain about is your ability to reach your maximum potential actually comes through your actions and not just planning and preparing with no risk of failure. And the last thing I'll leave you with is just a friendly reminder that money isn't everything. There's an idea that money can solve all your problems, which of course isn't true. Money can only solve your money problems. And the truth is, being alive means facing problems. Everybody has problems constantly, even if you're super wealthy. It's just that we all have different problems. So if you want to find happiness, you have to learn to live with problems. I think fulfillment comes from the ability to deal with your problems rather than from avoiding them. I've made a lot of mistakes in my 20s, but because of those lessons, I've learned not to make them now in my 30s. And that's why one way to learn fast is to fail fast. It's better to lose $100 when you're young than $1,000 when you're older, or $10,000 when you're retired. You'll probably learn the most through your actions, and as you try out different things, you'll get better at knowing what your limits are, where your strengths lie, and become better at spotting traps and unnecessary risks. So that's how you can get better with money over time. And to be fair, I'm not saying that you should YOLO your savings into penny stocks without doing any prior research. Learning before taking action is obviously important. I just see a lot of people leaning too much on the side of caution instead of action. So you have to find that right balance for yourself. And if you have any concerns about knowing when is the right time to move forward or any other financial questions, you can leave them in the comments below or put them in the channel's community tab. I will be doing a live Q&A stream next Sunday, so head over there if you want to know more information about that. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found this video useful for your financial journey, and I'll talk to you next week. I've made a... Oops.